The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. It's good to be with you. We kind of shifted the, the pulpit a little bit, and I asked for this uh, deal. I haven't figured out where I'm going to put this yet, but I'm figuring out as we go, right now. So... Uh, 
It's good to have an opp the opportunity to be with you today. I have been here at uh, Fork Zion a number of times over the years. And uh, we have, um, mostly I've been here for meetings. And so I've been downstairs. My first opportunity to be with you in worship this morning. So I'm thankful for this opportunity. Thanks for letting me be here and have a chance to share a bit. I serve as the Director for Evangelical Mission in our synod. That means that I'm responsible to be a resource person in the whole areas of, of mission and stewardship. I'm working with a team of your congregation along with some people from the, the larger church, from the uh, church-wide organization that based out of Chicago and a few other congregations in our synod looking at ways we can strengthen the mission and direction of those churches, including Fork Zion. And so uh, I've had the privilege of uh, working with a few of you along the way in that. But today, we're looking at this culmination of the work that you've been trying to do in the whole area of stewardship. And, and I'm very, I mean, I, I've been a pastor for over 35 years, and, and I've worked in a number of congregations. I now have served in this position for six years. And I know that stewardship is not exactly the thing everybody just rallies. Oh, boy, it's Commitment Sunday. I'm going, and let's get all our friends to come, too. This is a special experience for us. So, you know, and, and we got this speaker coming, you know, and then I come in and everybody's like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? So, so the reality is that it's not necessarily an experience that, that we look at and, and are, are drawn to. It's even true for people who are given the responsibility on a church council to be responsible for stewardship. I know as it's been handed out, you know, the property, oh sure, I'll, I'd like to do that, you know. Christian Ed, okay, I could do that, yeah. Stewardship? Uh, well, let's move on with that. Evangelism? Those are the two areas I'm responsible for to work with in the congregations. So what I want us to realize today is that everything that, that we seek to look at in this whole area of stewardship is really built around the idea of our discipleship of following Jesus. That's really what it's about. It's, it's continuing to allow our journey with God in Christ to touch every aspect of our lives and think about how we might do that. So it always starts in our own journey, even though uh, everything's worked out in, in one way or another, a lot of different conversations with us, but it always starts with grace. It always starts with the reality that God has blessed us with everything that we are and everything that we have. I mean, think about it. I mean, it really, it, it starts in the whole reality of the fact that we have a relationship with God and that's been given to us through Christ and that there is this whole aspect of the gospel that says, I don't know if you've ever heard this verse before, you know, it's somewhere in the Bible, I think you might be able to tell me when you hear it, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Now, I could have rainbow hair and John 3.16 being held up behind a golfer somewhere, and you'd know the reality of that verse. But the reality of it is that God has reached out into our lives and said, you are so important to me that I've sent my son so that, yeah, it's true. You're not all that I would have you be. And, and each of us know that. We all know that we aren't, we aren't perfect. I mean, I, oh, wait, let's get that. Is there anybody here that is perfect? I'd like, I just want to make sure because we'll let you, you can head out now. Uh, you, you, I mean, there is the whole reality, right? We all know. You know that phrase, nobody's perfect. And what God has said is that, but there is forgiveness and new life available in Jesus, available to each one of us. And it's a gift to us. There is even a passage of scripture that we can work with. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, but the gift of God. And the result, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Grace happens in our lives. And it starts with that whole reality that says we can walk with God. We can talk to God. We can be in a relationship with God. And it's given to us through the cross. Through the reality of Jesus dying for us, pouring his whole life out for us, each of us individually and all of us together, interested in being drawn closer to Christ, closer to God, and that whole journey of, of God's love for us in Jesus. 
So we have that. It's why we gather. It's why we're drawn to this whole journey with God. And we have it every day. It isn't just because we're here in church. It happens wherever you are, across this neighborhood, across this section of Western Pennsylvania, across the world. There may be some people gathered here today that by Wednesday could be in China. I mean, that happens in the way our world is these days. And wherever we go, God goes with us. Grace. The whole reality of grace. And it's that way if we travel all the way across the world. It's that way if there's a really tough visit we have to make. There's this person in our family that, yeah, this is the Sunday we have to go see him. And we don't know. We don't, you know, that kind of thing. And then we, you know, the awkwardness and difficulties that we face or this friend. Whether it be across the world in geography or into the life of someone else with whom we struggle, God goes with us. It's the promise of that grace. But it goes way beyond that. It's true that, but there's this whole experience of the reality. Everything that we have, everything, every, you pick it. God's provided it. From, you know, the, the down, you know, your socks and shoes that some of us are, I suppose, I'm not looking, stockings, I suppose, whatever it might be. But anyhow, the reality is that there is whatever you, you, you have, holding to, to what's in your refrigerator, to the reality of, of all that we have, is given to us by God, and it belongs to God, that it's God's, that God allows us to, to, to use, to make use of. And that's why the word stewardship is embraced in our journey with God, because it's really not ownership. We really don't own it. It is given to us by God to be used to the glory of God. Everything belongs to God. And there's times when we don't even think about that. And in fact, there's times when even we actually think, you know, we own, it's my stuff, and I can do with it whatever I want. And there's an aspect of where we can approach the world that way, but I don't know if you know, but that's kind of the whole picture of what the word sin's about, is that it isn't, it isn't important to me what God thinks. It's mine. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it with what I want to do it with. See that, 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 that fruit on the tree? It looks good to be eaten. To slip back into Genesis. And she took and she ate. God had said, no, I have, he took and she ate. And she gave it to her husband. He ate. That's, guys, you've got to realize, I mean, whatever women put out in front, we eat. You know, I mean, that's just the reality. There's, I mean, there's this whole thing about how, you know, it's the Eve that really fell, you know. Uh, sorry, but, you know, I mean, she actually had a conversation. We just ate it as soon as it was offered to us. The reality is that all of us, are less than what God would have us be, and we've been forgiven in that, in that gift, but, but it still dogs our feet, and we still think we can, we, we have some, and, and stewardship is this opportunity in our discipleship of God to begin to realize that, you know, it all belongs to God. We want to find more and more ways of, of living that out. And so we can know, beginning with our baptisms, the whole reality that we've been touched by God's love and invited into the God's family and that we are a part of God's family and we can live and walk with God right now unto all eternity, grace. And then we move into the journey of faith, a faith journey. That's part of that verse. For by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing, but it's the gift of God, not the result of works so that no one may boast. It moves into faith. It's a faith walk with God that we live. I, I asked for a chair today. Just a basic folding chair, your typical church folding chair. Some of them are, this at least has a little padding. Some of them don't even have padding, you know, so pretty solid, good there, chair there. The reason I asked for it is that a lot of times when we talk about faith, we think that it's a journey like blind faith. We just have to do it and we have no idea what's going to happen and we have no sense of where it comes from or anything else. But the reality about faith is interesting is that faith starts with something we have experienced and builds from there. So like, you know, this chair is just sitting here, you know, and I can just walk over and I'm just going to just sit right down. I have no problem sitting down. I knew, and you know how I knew that? I, I have been around churches for like, well, in, I'm in my early 60s, so, you know, a long time, okay? And I've seen chairs like this all the time. And I could pretty much know if there would be a shaky chair that I didn't want to sit on. But this one I could tell right away. I could just sit down and do that. In fact, I've learned on, on chairs, if these kind of chairs, you know, 
if you step in the front of it, you're safe. And how partly I know that is because when you're trying to do something and you get a little distracted and you step to the back of one of these folding chairs, what happens? It folds. Yeah, you know. So it's not a good thing to be doing what I'm doing right now. I don't recommend this. This is not a good thing. But there is a certain trust and you know what a chair will do and what it won't. And so, but you, you move from what you've experienced to do something that may be a little risky. That happens in all kinds of ways in our lives every day. I mean, we drive roads, and we drive on the right side of the road. Generally speaking, I mean, if everybody just picked what side of the road they wanted to drive on, it'd be a wild thing out there, the whole thing. But we've experienced that, we've trusted that, although we know there's some risk involved because there are people that may not be handling things. But faith is this whole thing of moving from the known into the unknown. It's being willing to step out based on what you know. Think about what you know in your God that you've trusted. Part of the reason you're here this morning is in one way or another, you've, you've had a sense of God touching your life in some way or another, and you're here as a part of that journey. And it may be an early journey in that walk. It may be something you've done all your life. But faith arises from those steps. I mean, Pastor had shared how her heart was heavy coming in today. But she steps out and she comes, and it's a part of her responsibility, part of her discipline, part of her following a Jesus that comes. I mean, all of us, you may have come here with a heavy heart over something, and come hoping that God can touch your life in some new way and encourage. And the fact is, God does that. And so faith is a part of this moving from what we know and what we've experienced, what's been an anchor in our lives, but it leads us out. Faith, when it's operating right in a disciple's life, it keeps kind of stretching us. And there's times when we can kind of hold back and we, we aren't willing to be stretched and we just kind of get kind of dormant in, in our walk with God and kind of let everything be the way it's always been. And, and, and that can be a time that, that can be a real... Um, create a damper on our growth in the faith. It's important for us to every once in a while try something new. Maybe get a new chair once in a while. You know, maybe we need this chair. This one, stand on this one because I've had enough experience in the life of churches to know this one has been upholstered very nicely. And, and so you respect the reality of that but we try something new. And maybe we, we move it out of the sanctuary, put it out here in the middle. We take new steps, looking for where God, and listening all the way along in faith of trusting God to guide us and help us to grow in our walk with God. What I kind of see in some of the texts that we work with today is the reality of a, of a calling of a disciplined freedom. There is an aspect of our journey with God that is solid, that we trust. There are certain hymns that, that, that we find that, that move us and strengthen us. There are certain prayers, certain passages of Scripture, all of those things that are part of that, that lay the groundwork for us in our walk with God that enable us to kind of be a faithful disciple. But then there are times when God is just nudging us and saying, take a new step. Try something different. Move a little deeper. And one of the things that a commitment Sunday in stewardship is about is that whole sense of realizing that, that we are blessed with time, and treasure. We have the gift of having a period of time in our lives, and we don't know how long that will be, but we know that it's, been, it's all been given to us by God. How do we use that to God's glory? Is there some new step that we can take in how we're using our time to have an impact for the gospel, for the good news of Jesus? Maybe it's uh, we, we start this winter shoveling a neighbor's walk, or, or maybe it's 
uh, there's, a, there's an activity in the life of the church you've been thinking maybe you should go to, and you begin to take that step and say, that's something that you're going to do. Maybe, <coughs> maybe it has something to do with relationships in your family that, that you're willing to, to mix and change and enable to have happen. But we begin to pray about it and say, it's a new step in a whole experience of, of a commitment Sunday that says time is something that's been given to us by God. Are we using it faith? And is there some new way we can take a step? Talents. Each of you are gifted. I mean, I've, I've met a few of you, but I don't know your gifts. I don't know what they are. But the reality is every one of you has a gift to be used by God and usually generally multiple gifts that are available. I wonder, how are you doing with that? How are you using those gifts that God has given you to make a difference for the kingdom of God? Are you journeying it, or are you just kind of let that kind of slide and, and, and not be thinking? It's something that these kind of Sundays are meant to kind of say, I need to reevaluate, to take a look at, to wonder, are my gifts being used? Is there something going on in the life of this congregation or something else beyond where, where I have a gift that I could offer? And to realize that God goes with me in that journey. It's an encouragement. It's a stretch. It's, it's taking the faith that we know and moving out on a new step. That's what this time is meant to be. And yes, it's hard. There's times when, ah, oh, you know, we never did this kind of a stewardship thing in our church before. And all those kind of things that sometimes happen whenever we try something different. There's that, that whole thing. It feels uncomfortable. It's like having to work... It, I don't know, somebody decided we're going to get these red hymnals. You know, what was wrong with the green hymnals? You know, in fact, those old hymnals that we had before that were... But the fact is, along the way, what happens is that we begin to find God there. And sometimes we get stretched in new ways. And we begin to grow in our faith. And it's the same thing when we use our talents. And it's true measure as well. The fact is that we can sometimes become comfortable in what we're giving to God in ways that doesn't stretch us. And we need the encouragement from time to time to say, maybe I need to step out a little more and reshift the priorities of my finances in a way to where I can have more of an impact for God. And believe me, as soon as that rolls, there will be eight things that will cross our minds as to why that's not a good idea. In the same way, the other two things that I mentioned. But the fact is, when we begin to take seriously the possibility of the work of God's kingdom having an impact upon our finances, our priorities in life are challenged and changed. There, it happens. We begin to see when that is the first thing we do and it's the first fruit and it begins to be something that we're seeking to grow. One of the suggestions I heard was just the reality. Whatever the percentage you might be giving, to just grow at a percent, whatever that might be. The possibilities that arise when all of a sudden we have to start thinking about everything else we're spending money on and this begins to be the priority that's first for us shakes us up and makes us wrestle a bit. That's good. 